Welcome to PCI Tech TV, where we pass on tech tips and new product information from PCI Geomatics. Today we're talking about Geomatica 2012, a new software that's being launched by PCI Geomatics in September 2011. So we're going to be looking at automation in Geomatica 2012, and uh, the demo that Sean's going to give us today is using some CompSat imagery. And uh, we've got several CompSat images. This is a smaller project, but uh, you, you can uh, basically do the same thing with uh, quite a large number of images with Geomatica. Uh, a lot of our customers do this, and uh, we're going to show you a subset uh, of about six images. Uh, this is over the Toronto area, and we're going to use we're going to be using a raw spot five uh, orthorectified uh, mosaic, and we're going to be correcting that with um, we're going to be correcting the comp set images with with the spot five as a uh, as a reference. So I'm going to pass it over to Sean for the demo. Thank you very much, Kevin. So in this demo right here, we're going to be using Ortho Engine, which is a step by step workflow which allows you to do the orthorectification using automated, uh, automated processes for given steps. So it's a little bit more hands-on, but at the same time it's still very automated for, the, for the, what's usually considered the time-consuming steps such as uh, ground control point collection, tie point collection, and mosaicing such as cut line generation and color balancing. So what we're going to do today is we're going to be working with Ortho Engine, which is our step-by-step -step process flow um, application which allows you to do orthorectification, mosaicing, amongst other tasks. And we're going to be using this application in order to do a semi-automated approach for creating orthorectified images as well as the mosaic from raw CompSat scenes. So now the first thing I want to do here is show you the images in focus, the raw images that we're going to be working with. So I can bring them up here and you can basically see that there is some alignment. They do line up fairly nicely, but still that's not quite good enough in, to ensure that we have a seamless mosaic. I see some other differences, Sean. There seems to be some differences in color and uh, maybe compared to the uh, to the final product? Yes, no, definitely. I mean, what we're looking at here is, is individual scenes. So there's definitely, they're not radiometrically balanced to one another. So you're going to have color uh, balancing issues between the, two, between, uh, between the images in this project here. So for example, this one image is a lot lighter than its adjacent images. So why would you want to make a seamless mosaic? What does that mean? What, how does that help you? Well, essentially creating a seamless mosaic allows us to have basically take all these images together and essentially create a synthetic single image with them. So it allows us to basically have this uh, outline, but it looks as if it's just one complete image. Okay, so, so I'm going to show that on screen right now. So it looks nicer, essentially. Essentially it looks nicer. Well, so, I can see the differences here with this one, yeah. Exactly. So one of the really nice things about this image is that we actually have, you cannot tell where one image begins and the other image ends, right. hence the synthetic seamless image, okay. or a single image. Right. So there's another important characteristic to point out, is the fact that these images that I'm showing up here on screen have a nominal geometric correction, but they're not orthorectified, and they're not um, bundle adjusted together to, to one another so that there is proper alignment between adjacent images. So I'm going to zoom in on an area here between two images just to illustrate this point. So you can see how there's a fairly decent alignment between the two images but the roadways do not match and this makes for an ugly mosaic. So what we're going to do here is flip on our finished product and see how we are able to completely remove that uh, completely remove that misalignment and basically provide you with the seamless mosaic which we've been talking about. Right. Now orthorectification doesn't only shift images, it also warps them together using an elevation model, is that correct? That's very correct, yes. So it's more than just a simple uh, offset shift. It's actually doing a uh, complete, uh, basically modeling the image to the ground uh, using the DEM and then using also ground control points. But we're also doing a bundle adjustment which allows us to collect tie points and we're able to take um, the models of each individual scene, combine them together to create an overall model which will help make sure that we have relative alignment as well or relative accuracy between images. Okay, So let's see how you do this in Ortho Engine. So basically I just want to quickly walk you through the, uh, the main processing steps that's required. So as mentioned earlier, Ortho Engine is a step-by-step -step application. So you work on one step, complete that, and you move on to the next step. Okay. It just makes this process of doing the orthorectification and the mosaicing a lot more simple. So I brought down this uh, drop down box here and what it does, what I want to do is just show you that there's different steps involved with cre creating our orthorectified image. So the ones that we need to know about is that first we need to set up our project. So choosing our model, our satellite, uh, for example we chose two tans model. 
uh, in order to do our um, model or bundle adjustment. Then you can actually do the data ingest. From there you move on to the GCP and tie point collection. I'll move down to your model calculation. So you're just computing the bundle model or the bundle adjustment. And then finally these steps are uh, for DEM generation so we can skip those. Move on to our ortho generation. So we just simply define, uh, define some parameters for how we're going to generate our ortho. And then finally once we have our orthos we can move on to the mosaic generation. We've already created our project, so we're using a two tans model. We've already imported our images, so we've imported six CompSats, uh, CompSat 2 scenes at 4 meter resolution. So now we're going to move on to the GCP collection. So we have a few different options that we can choose from in order to do our GCP collection. Now since the theme of this uh, episode is to do automation, we're going to show you the automated approach for GCP collection. So I can open up this panel here. So now in this panel, we have all of our six uh, CompSat scenes already loaded. So it will do the GCP collection for all six scenes in a row. So it does it all at once, basically. So the first thing we need to do in order to uh, start running our automated GCP, GCP collection is to choose our reference input file. So we're gonna collect, or we're gonna select here the spot scene that we showed you in, in the focus viewer earlier. Right. So move down to reference. Now I have the spot mosaic here. So we want to choose which input channel. Now the first channel is the near infrared channel and that's the one we're going to be working with. So I'm going to change the number of GCPs. So we're going to be looking for about 30 GCPs per image. Okay. It just increases our chances of finding good GCPs. So this will look through each CompSat image in the corresponding area on the spot. Yes. And try to find 30 GCPs for each one of those. That's correct, yes. Okay. So the next step is to choose our DEM so we can get elevation information. This is also important in order to do our bundle adjustment. Right. So we choose the Toronto DEM that we have here. Open that up. We can select our no data value, which I already know is negative 32767. But in case you don't know that, we also provide statistics. So you can figure out what the lowest value is in your DEM and see if that makes sense to be a no data value. That's if you download SRTM. You don't need to do anything to it. You can just use it directly. Exactly. Way. Exactly. So I'm going to select that. So now we're pretty much set up to go. So there's a few additional options as well that we can set here. So we can increase our search radius to make sure that we're searching in a larger, um, uh, a larger kernel to ensure that we find proper correction. Now this is important if you know that your images are very, um, f the alignment of your images are fairly off or the, the uh, position, the accuracy of your raw images are very poor. Uh, we also can choose a minimum acceptance score. Okay. So this is also important to that if you're not finding GCPs because say you're working with very low resolution imagery, you can decrease this acceptance score to help increase the probability of finding GCPs. So the trade-off is quality of GCPs, I imagine. Or? Exactly. Right. It might find it might uh, in, uh, find a few inaccurate GCPs at that point. Okay. So once we have all this set up, we basically just simply choose the match GCPs button. And within a couple of seconds, we'll have all of our GCPs in this list. So this is currently processing the, the six CompSat images. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, this looks like it's going to happen pretty quick here. So we'll get our GCPs uh, fairly quickly. Exactly. It's actually quite phenomenally uh, fast. So if we look down here, we actually were able to collect 151 GCPs in total. So this is 151 for all of six for all of the six images that were included in the project. That's a lot faster than doing it manually. <laughs> it's quite a bit faster. I actually uh, can now do uh, mosaics of this sort in hours as opposed to days, which right. is which is quite uh, quite beneficial. So another nice uh, tool that we have here is we can actually compute the model at this point. So I click this, and we can get our residuals for each GCP that was collected. Okay. We can sort it by the highest to lowest, and then we can choose which GCPs we want to add to the project and which ones we want to omit. So I'm going to pull up a footprint um, or an image layout uh, panel here where we can click on the individual images and we can see our GCPs and where their positions are within the image footprint. So we can do this for all of our images and we can see that for the most part we have a relatively even spatial distribution, but we probably would want to go in there and actually do a little bit of refinement, a little bit of GCP pruning, if you will. We've looked at our distribution of the GCPs. We can see that, okay, for the most part, we are happy with what we have found. But we can actually now move on to inspecting them manually. So looking at the individual GCPs, 
where they were collected within the images. So we're going to open up our viewer here. And we're going to open up our reference image. So I'm going to choose a geocoded image, the same one that we that you saw earlier. I'm going to load the bands slightly different so that the GCPs show up nicer. I'm going to choose our DEM. And we will be able to inspect the actual GCPs. So if we look at this list down here, we have all the GCPs that were collected for this image right now that's open. Mm -hmm. So we can click on a GCP and it will automatically pan to that GCP and center it in the viewer. So we can zoom in on it and make sure that we collected on the proper feature. And as you can see with the, pro with the layout here, as compared to this feature, this parkland, it is correct. So we can go through the list and actually inspect and if necessary, remove GCPs that were perhaps collected on the top of buildings or in areas that we're just simply not happy with. And one of the other things that we can do in this panel is we can actually collect new GCPs for images where, say, we need uh, better distribution of the GCPs. For example, we didn't collect in the bottom right corner of an image. We can then collect a few GCPs in that case. So that is essentially the GCP collection capabilities of OrthoEngine and Geomatica 2012. So now we would move on to the tie point collection, which is a similar process. So we can then open up, we have a few options here. We have collect tie points manually, or we can collect our tie points automatically. So collecting tie points automatically would open up this panel here. I'm just going to move it to the side. And we can collect, we have different distribution patterns. We can do entire image over the, or the, just the overlap areas, so where the images overlap. So we're going to choose entire image in this case. We're going to limit our tie points per area to just nine. We don't necessarily want too much tie points. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as actually true with GCPs. So we're going to maintain all the default values here, select our DEM, so, and then we just simply push our collect tie point button. And these are going to be used for uh, correcting everything all at once. Is that correct? How, how, does, well, how does that work, a block bundle adjustment? It works with the GCP. So basically, they're used to help provide relative alignment between adjacent images. So where you have ground control points collected, they're not looking at the two, uh, you know, the two abutting images. They're looking at just the individual image to the reference point and then doing recomputing the model based on that, whereas tie points take into consideration the actual six scenes that we have in, in this model or in this project. So we're going to be collecting the uh, tie points in order to sort of tie the images together and make sure roads line up, with, line up with one another. So the next point, now that we have our ground control points and our tie points collected, we're able to move down to the next processing step, which is model calculation. It's just a simple click of the button and we're able to perform our bundle adjustment. So this is using the tie points. This is using the tie points, exactly. So from this step, we can actually go down to the ortho generation. Okay. And this is where we can finally create our ortho rectified images. So we would click on the ortho generation button to bring up this panel here. So these are all of our input images that we've collected ground control points for and tie points for. So we can now add them to our processing queue by selecting them all and clicking this button here. So now all these images are going to be orthorectified one after another. So we can choose our output folder where we want to save the images. So it's going to create a new image file, which is basically this, that corresponding raw image, but orthorectified. Okay. So now that we have our ortho, uh, ortho generated uh, images, we're able to move on to the mosaicing step. So the mosaicing step, basically there's a few different panels and once again a few different options. We have manual options as well as we have an automated option for doing our cut line and color balancing. Okay. So the first initial step is to set up your project, your mosaic project file. So we have all the different images that we've orthorectified are showing up here, so we can see the footprints. The red bound represents the bounding of our mosaic. So we select a mosaic file, so an output file to write to. save that and then we can choose essentially the images that we want to add to this mosaic so we can choose just one we can choose two or we can choose all of them okay 
So once we've selected the images and essentially set up our project, we can generate our mosaic. What we have here is the list of all the orthos that are going to be added to this mosaic. So then we have our cut line generation options here. So we can choose, there's a few different options. For example, we have minimum difference, minimum relative difference. We have a new algorithm called edge features, which helps avoid certain uh, building-like features and helps ensure that you don't cross over linear, um, linear objects in the image. So we're going to select that. So it looks like you can generate a preview as opposed to go straight to the, orth the mosaic generation process and then you can do some adjustments? Exactly. We get a chance to look at what our image will look like and then actually um, load that into the, to the viewer, into a, a, an editing tool, and actually go in there and adjust the cut lines and adjust the color balancing of the images. So we can take a look at the preview and basically see if we're happy with the cut lines that we've generated as well as the color balancing that's been applied. And if we're not happy with the cut lines or the, uh, or the color balancing that's been applied to the image, we can adjust them on the fly. Now that we're looking at this cut line, we can actually do some dynamic cut line editing. And we can see what the, what the changes will look like right on the fly as they show up. So I'm going to select this tool here, which is basically going to snap to the vector cut line that we have and create a new vertex. So I can actually go around what we're currently looking at. And we're going to see that the image has changed. Now, now, now what I've done is not necessarily better than what we had. I just want to quickly demonstrate some of the new tools that we have in the manual mosaic editing uh, application. So now that we've applied some basic adjustments to the image, we can actually go back and then regenerate our full resolution mosaic. So I'm going to close this panel, go back to the automated flow or automated processing, automated generation, and generate our mosaic. Okay, so it looks like you've got uh, all the tools you need really to uh, automate the production process, but also uh, it looks like there's quite a few uh, places where you can tweak the parameters and you know improve the results as you go. Yeah, very correct. And actually, uh, some of these tools have been optimized in Geomatica 2012 now to make it easier on users in order to do manual adjustments when necessary. But we've actually improved the automated adjustments to minimize the times that are uh, the occurrences that people would have to actually do any manual editing. Right. So if you can automate most of the process and then um, minimize the amount of QA, that's obviously ideal. Exactly. Yes. Well, thanks for that, Sean. And uh, thanks for tuning in to this uh, PCI Tech TV episode on uh, automation using Ortho Engine for uh, image preprocessing. Thank you.